Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here and let's explore the Unity Asset Store. So this series is all about taking a look at the Asset Store and seeing what cool things we can find in there which are going to be useful for everyone from an absolute beginner to a highly advanced level of Unity. Now, full disclosure, in this series I've been paid for nothing in this, I own none of the assets and everything I've found is something that I believe is reasonably good for pretty much everyone out there. And when I say reasonably, I actually mean they're really good. So I haven't received anything for this and I will never receive anything for what I do in this series. So that aside, let's check out some enemies. So this episode we're going to look at enemies and how we can use them in your game and all the different cool things that come with it. So the first one I'd like to have a look at is a skeleton. So let's have a look at skeleton. P B R, and I will leave links to everything that I look at in the description for this video as well. So obviously full credit goes to the original creators on every asset that we look at here. So this skeleton looks pretty neat. So if we click on import and download, you'll be able to bring it straight into your game. And I've gone ahead and already gone and downloaded it so we can save ourselves some time. So if we drag and drop our skeleton into our game, because it's low poly, it maybe seem a little bit small, but not to worry, let's increase his size to maybe three by three by three, and we can see him much larger. Let's bring him up on top of our cube here, which could represent the floor, and let's bring our camera a little bit more into position so we can see what's going on. Let's rotate it 180 to see our skeleton, and let's check him out with some moves. So the great thing about this guy is he has some animations already brought in and if we take a look by clicking this little arrow here we can see he has a lot of animations now a lot of free stuff in the unity asset store uh, is like a demo kind of thing and you don't have as many uh, animations as this so as you can see here he's got two idle animations most things only come with one idle animation but that's not to say that they all do you know some do come with quite a lot of animations and animation is important when it comes to development so let's take this uh, skeleton, let's give him an animation. Let's have a look what he looks like. So I'm going to remove the animator component because I like dealing with the animation. I feel it's easier to work with, I should say. So animation, and let's take a look at his idle two animation. So if we take this animation, hold control, press D, it gives us a separate animation to work with. It's much easier this way. But because we're using the animation, obviously we have to go up here in debug and change it to legacy. And on the skeleton himself, let's bring in this idle animation and have a quick look. We can see it's already set it. So we have size one and let's have a look. In fact, let's actually set the rep mode to loop so it constantly plays. And let's have a look at our idle animation for our skeleton. So that's kind of cool. That's like him waiting. Uh, so we could also have a look at the death. So when he dies, let's take the death, hold control, press D and let's have a look at this. Remember, we always have to go debug, set it as legacy, because, like I say, we're using the animation. So let's take a look at his death animation. And, oh, okay, so I've looped it there. <laughs> Not to worry. We can always turn that off. So that's going to be once. So he's going to just, oh, uh, he's gone. So now this is kind of cool if you're working with like a dungeon style game. And as I say, there's a lot of uh, animations to work with here. So obviously you would use this enemy and you would incorporate your own kind of ray casting and hitting on the skeleton. I like this because the amount of animations that actually come with it, even though it's free, it's, it's quite handy. And you can always work around and customize the skeleton. For example, if you wanted to change him to maybe a different type of skeleton like you can change the normal maps and play around that way to give them a kind of grimy grisly look so playing with around with the assets that you get is always a good thing because it's cool to see what you come up with so the next thing we're going to look at is a spider type enemy so spider green and i like this one i like how this one looks Obviously, all credit goes to the original creator. And if by any means you feel like looking at anything else the creator's done, you can probably scroll down, take a look there, or you can click on them here and you can see what they've created. There's loads of great things. Some creators are absolutely fantastic in what they create. So I've taken this spider and I've already gone ahead and I have him right here. So spider model, 
And this guy's a little bit bigger, but he's got a couple less animations, but that's not to worry. If we drag and drop him, we can see just how cool he looks in the scene. So once again, as we're focusing on enemies, this guy looks like a real good enemy. A boss style enemy, if you will. But if you fancy as a normal enemy, you can always just decrease his size. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And he looks pretty good. So by default, this guy uh, has the animation attached, which is all good. So I'm going to turn off this skeleton for now. And let's have our camera have a look at our spider. So let's bring it here. And let's turn the camera around to look at him. And let's just press play and see what he does by default. He attacks. Perfect. I like that. So obviously you can use scripting as well to take a look at the actual uh, animation. So let's try creating a script and playing a different type of animation on command. So I'm going to right click and create a quick C sharp script here. Spider play. And what I'll do is I'll create a quick button on screen which will let us play a different animation that the spider has. So Let's quickly declare our variables and as I say, everything we do here is a real good way of showing off how you can use these things in game. In your own game, I should say. So public void spider command and open close bracket, open curly bracket. And all I'll do is just the spider dot get component. It's going to be the animation because that is the one that's attached and I like the animation component. Uh, dot play. And let's see what animation shall we play from his selection. Let's have him die. So well, let's play death on command. So death. And let's save that script and let's quickly bring in a button. Uh, game object UI. Let's have a button and game object to attach the script. So we can bring that into there. Button. Click on plus because we need to add in that. No function. Spider play. And we called it spider command, didn't we? So if we press play now and have a look. He's attacked. Now let's let him die. Oh, okay. So the variable spider. Oh, that's because I've not actually attached it, have I? I just need to drag and drop that there. So there we go. Oh, he's attacked. And there we go, he's died. Now, I like this one because it's simple, but it's effective. I like how the animations work on this one. I've been through all these animations and they do look kind of cool, especially with these two attack left and attack right. Now, by default, if we go on the spider, you can see that element one is attack left, element two is attack right, so we could always give them a go. So attack right and save that script so we've just quickly changed the name of the animation and if we press play we should be able to see so he's attacked let's have him attack right so you can see he's brought a different style of attack there because it came to his right so yeah i like this one quite a lot i, I feel it's a, a boss style enemy that we can work with so the next one i want to look at is kind of a bit more cartoony i should say so if we go to the asset store and I'm going to type in Toon RTS and as I say links will be in the description if you fancy any of these and I particularly like this one here and this one is an orc and you can see you can probably see why I like this one it's a little bit different than the others that we've worked with and you can see if we just click import we can download no problem so I've gone ahead and I already have this, so let's rather disable our spider. And let's bring in this. So if we go on prefab, you can see it's kind of cool. The idea of this one, I feel, is more based towards a visual look rather than actually being used for an enemy. But in saying that, this does it a little different. So you can see this has the animations here. And we could use these animations if we wanted to, but I feel this gives a bit more game design and a bit more artwork towards your game rather than use it for an enemy itself. For example, if we press play, we can see how cool he does look. Yes, he looks still, but I feel it's more arty than the actual enemy itself. 
So going to the back to the asset store, this creator, this one only is a demo. Uh, he does have a paid version of this, and by by any means, it's it's up to you whether you would want to give it a go. As I say, the reason I like this is I like the style and the solid colors of how this actually is. So let's give this a quick go. So if we take this, hold control, press D. Um, it should, if we go on to the actual enemy himself, uh, if we drag and drop onto there and press play, we can see that you can still use the animations, no problem. It's just the animations are done a little differently with this one because they're done in separate prefabs down here, or an FBX file, I should say. So the idea of that is we could perhaps take this one as well. Uh, that's combat, so if we hold control, press D on that, we could always drag and drop that onto him. And you can see this is all done via the animator, uh, sorry, animator, not animation. But there's a couple of different um, animations here to work with. So, as I say, I, I like this one, mainly for the art style of it, but, you know, it, it's up to you what you'd want to go for. So we've covered a few little assets here and there in this episode, and it's given a bit of variation on what to do. So next time we're going to look at some more cool stuff, maybe some environment stuff. Environment is an awesome thing, and there's a lot of environments to explore in the asset store. So I can guarantee there's going to be quite a few episodes, because I found an immense amount of environmental stuff. If you like any of these assets, please, please have a look in the asset store, download them. And obviously, as I say, all credit goes to the original creators, not me. So guys, I hope you've been inspired by what we've seen here and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.